It's often described as the toughest part of eBay selling, the shipping and handling. How do you go about doing it in the right way? Well, hopefully after today's video, you'll know exactly how to do that. We're gonna be integrating my eBay store with the Australia Post My Business Setup, which makes this whole thing incredibly easy to do. And I'm gonna show you the correct way to package your items up so they actually get into your buyer's hands in the way that you described it in your initial listing. The last thing you want is to get an item damaged in the post. The postage and handling is one of, if not the most crucial aspect to the journey and fulfillment of a sale. It's great to find the item, it's great to list it up for the correct price and have it sell, but if you don't get it to the buyer in a timely manner per as it was described, you're not gonna make too many more sales moving on from there. So hopefully today's video, there's a few bits of nuggets of knowledge for you to take away and apply to your own reselling business. I'm raising money for the Movember cause over the next 30 days as well. Some more information on that a little bit later on in this video. Let's get into it. All right, so the supplies that I use well, they're pretty minimal, guys. We've got the printer here and the Dymo label 5XL. I'll go into a bit more detail on that later. Uh, we've got the Australia Post My Business set up, ready to be activated. Again, we'll speak of that soon. Uh, I've got these satchels that I use. We've got the flat rate. We've got the small and the mediums, which we'll be using today. Uh, I've got the large domestic letter that we use with tracking uh, for two DVDs. And then I've got these individual DVD video game envelopes that I use as well. Um, we've got some butcher's paper. We use a lot of bubble wrap as well. And then I've got some cardboard boxes that I generally pick up from Bunnings Warehouse for free. So that along with a pen, some scissors, some tape, some scales, uh, and a tape measure, that's really everything that I need on a daily basis to get my shipping done. So once I've looked out all of my shipping supplies, the next thing that I like to do is jump into the tubs and pull out all of my sales. Now we're doing the Monday sales today. So there's been a total of 17 come through over the weekend, and I'm actually really happy with the different variety that we've got with these sales because there's a lot of different shipping requirements for each of them. So it's gonna make this tutorial video a good one. Once I've, I've looked it out, which I have done already, I've already gone ahead and pulled the 17 out, you're probably looking at them right now, um, is actually the first step of the process is I grab all of the single DVDs and video games because I don't actually integrate them with the Australia Post My Business on the internet. Uh, I just literally handwrite them on the envelopes. So that kind of gets it away done first. And then from there, I can import everything into Australia Post that does require a label printout. So we'll go ahead and we'll do all the single DVDs and video games now. All right, if you're doing DVDs and video games like I do, the number one envelope that you're gonna need is this Medium Australia Post tracked envelope. I speak about it quite a bit on my channel because I pretty much use it every single day. Uh, if you get sales of two, which is what we're doing here with Outlander today, I've actually started to put them into these large Australia Post tracked envelopes. Um, look really good and convenient in the sense that once you've sent the item off, that tracking number's there for that buyer to go and dispute with Australia Post if they haven't received their item. So it really just it cuts out a lot of customer service queries. Um, and you do need to pay a little bit more for it though, as opposed to potentially going with an untracked white envelope, which might cost you $2.80 in equivalent. This is gonna cost you about $4.80. Uh, but I would encourage you guys for the cheap sales that you make if you're doing DVDs and video games to get those white envelopes, put a stamp on it and you'll be fine. Um, and then I've only just started recently using these large envelopes as well uh, for two DVDs, just there. And um, that's actually saved me quite a lot of money because I used to put two DVDs plus uh, into a small satchel, and that used to cost me about $7.70. This is working out to be about a little under $6 now. So there's a good $2 savings right there by putting them into these large envelopes. So if you're not doing that yet, uh, go and buy yourself those. Now I actually get them from Australia Post in bundles of 10, and I get a Australia Post, my post discount as well when I buy in bulk. A really quick and easy way to get your buyer the tracking number with these envelopes is to actually just through the eBay app, select add tracking number, and then just scan this barcode number and it automatically fulfills the tracking details for this envelope. So the buyer gets it straight away and you know that it's all safe and secure and ready to go. So the large envelopes have got them too. Uh, the mediums as well, and it's a very, very one-step click. No need to type out the tracking numbers. All right, the next step in the process is to integrate all of our remaining orders into the Australia Post My Business. Now, what that basically refers to is the integration that you can do with your eBay store or just general eBay account 
uh, into Australia Post. So it automatically imports all of your orders and all of your details. And you really just need to go through clicking confirm and then print your labels out. So it's a really streamlined, quick and easy process to generate yourself some labels to then be able to drop off at the post office. So I've got the, uh, the screen here rolling for the Australia Post My Business right now. Uh, I am logged in. So all I need to do is go to uh, up here where it says login. And then I just click on my business right there. So once that's done, um, just have to put in my login details, which are always incorrect. All right, and then we're into the welcome the welcome screen. So um, really for me, all I really do is just go up to orders. I select the orders button up the top there. Uh, and then from there, I've got, I think one pending. So you've got a, a ready to ship, which is when you've already gone ahead and put it all through. And then you've also got your draft orders page, which is where you actually go ahead and start fulfilling. But this little button up the top here, import eBay orders. I'm gonna click on that first of all. And what that does is I've already got that paired up with my eBay account. So right now it's generating what needs to be put in and printed out. And because I've already removed all of the envelopes that I've written out, um, it's gonna be really easy for it to just import. And I know that whatever's there is, is gonna to need it to be actioned. So um, it's importing itself right now. We've got a total of 14 ordered orders imported. And then from there, I can just simply select edit draft orders. So I just click on that one there. After they've all been imported, I basically just like to go through and pull out any of the small satchels. Anything that I think will fit or I know will fit into a small satchel, I'm just gonna allocate those first. I, I just like to personally do them into groupings. So we've got a pair of Commonwealth, uh, Commonwealth game shorts or pants, I should say, and I know that they're gonna go ahead and be a small satchel. So basically I just go in and I, um, I, I won't show you the details of the person. Um, but I'll just manipulate the, the listing. I'll make sure that I select send tracking notifications as well. There's a little optional tick box that I can select for that. Uh, and then I go down to the details of the order and the parcel details, do I select game dangerous goods? It's always gotta be a no or otherwise it won't be sent. And then I've got Commonwealth Games zip off track pants. You need 50 characters here. So I'll always just remove the back end of that. And that holds it to what the item actually is. Now here, you've got packaging type. So I'm just gonna go ahead and select the Australia Post flat rate satchel maximum of five kilos, which I've got here at the house. I'm just gonna select small there. And then from there, the price points are automatically generated for you. So I know that we're using a small satchel and that's gonna cost me $7.76. So I'm just gonna simply select that. I don't want any optional extras. I don't wanna add cover, which you can do. You can select that box to add some insurance. Um, you will pay for it. And you could also add for uh, signature on delivery as well. And you'd pay an extra $2.95. I personally just never do that because this Australia Post tracked envelope, um, not envelope, satchel, uh, it's got a tracking number. So you're always pretty much safe and you don't need too much extra cover for any item that I'm doing. If I was to sell something worth a few thousand dollars, which never happens, uh, I might put insurance on it. But anything sort of $100 and under, uh, I, don't, I don't worry. Um, so that's it there, that's done. And I can just simply select save order and from there, that's now in a position where it's now ready to be printed out uh, on the printer that we've got here. So automatically integrated. That took 30 seconds from integration to confirmation. And now I just need to go ahead and print it out. So I'm just gonna go ahead and work through all of the remaining 14 orders and just allocate whether or not they are a small or a medium sized satchel. And then I'll show you what I do for the boxes. Worked out to a total cost of $32.50 uh, for the four satchels. So there was one that was in there at $9.22. Uh, and then three of them came in with the full discount at $7.76. So that's quite a big saving, $1.60 that I've been able to save just because I'm on the uh, level five band worth of discount. And the more that you sell over the course of every single month that you do this, uh, the higher your band and the higher your discount will be. So. Um, you'll initially start out at the full price of 9.22, and then you might save yourself 20 or 30 cents. And if you can work your way right up to the top, which is a band five, I think it's about 200 orders a month is to get to that level. Um, so as your sales increase, your savings with Australia Post will increase by being set up on this method. So uh, I do highly encourage it, but we've got four sales here to print out. So I'm just gonna proceed to the payment uh, and then I'm just gonna hit pay. So it's all automatically integrated. Um, that's already now been paid for. And then it says, uh, down the bottom there, it says print shipping labels, and that, that just pops it up. Now, for me, with my shipping labels, I actually do have a Dymo label writer, the, uh, the 5XL, which is the one that prints it off in the right size. Um, I do encourage you guys to try and grab a Dymo label printer. If you're doing you know, daily sales, if you've got daily sales coming in, I think that's the time to go for a Dymo 5XL. 
Um, I think they cost about $350 odd, but they are a really good investment. Um, the reason I'm not using one today is just because I'm simply out of labels and I've been out of labels for about three weeks. Um, so I'm just using the just the standard printer. I've just got a Workforce uh, 2810 is my printer and it cost me about $40 from Officework. So super cheap to get your hands on a printer. Uh, and, and it is actually a really seamless process with that, with that as well. So there we go. So we've got our four labels and then I'm gonna go ahead and just simply do a quick signature on the sign here box to declare there's no dangerous goods. And then I go ahead and I just cut them out. Now, if you had the Dymo label printer, let me get the camera on me. If you have the Dymo label printer, that would just simply print out, you'd have a sticky label and then you just go ahead and whack it on. So I do have to use sticky tape to staple the, uh, to tape these down. Uh, but it's not, it, it, it really isn't. You could just use a printer if you wanted to save yourself 350 bucks and not get a Dymo. Um, but the Dymos are a pretty good time saver. All right, the first one that I've got is a bundle of three DVDs. So this has to always go into a small satchel. It's not gonna fit into any envelope. I'm always gonna go and put a film of bubble wrap over the top of it just to secure it all up. Um, sometimes, and I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna do it for this one either. Sometimes I just leave it like that and I don't even bother taping it up because it is gonna be pretty sturdy once it goes in. Um, so I'll just fold that over like that. And then I slide it into the small satchel. And then I'm really kind of making sure it's going to be tight and I fold it over just like that. So it's really secure. That bubble wraps in there. It's not loose and bouncing around. Uh, and then from there, I'm just going to go ahead and tape the person's details just over the top like that. So that one there is how I do my three set of DVDs. And it would be the same for four or five DVD bundles as well. All right, clothing is the next one and they're very, very easy. I don't do anything with them. I literally just stuff them into the satchels and just away they go. For all of these things, including the uh, the envelopes before plus the satchels, I could definitely go a step further and just put a little thank you card in there, just requesting feedback. You might've noticed so far that I haven't done that. Um, and I know that's something I probably need to work on and improve with my business is just to put that in there. Feedback is so important on eBay and a lot of it comes down to obviously being shipped correctly, the item arriving in the description that you gave it initially in the listing. Uh, and, and just little, little add-ons that you can do is that little thank you note that you can put in there. But I've just, I've never done it in two and a half years and I'm probably costing myself a lot of really good positive feedback by just prompting people to do so. Um, so right at the very early beginnings of your eBay business, if you're just starting out, that's definitely something that I would recommend. But um, I've got only two items of clothing that have sold um, that are gonna fit into a small satchel. So uh, a couple of pairs of shorts and pants here. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and I mean, I don't need to put this on camera, I guess. I don't, I don't really need to film this, but they're just gonna slide in like that and the job's done. So clothing is so easy to ship off. I know a lot of you guys out there are probably selling your clothing and um, there's really not a lot to it on a shipping front. Uh, you just fold it over like that, take the air out of it, and that one right there is good to go. Now, my next order that I've got to do here is a comic book. And I'm selling quite a few comic books. This is an old one that I've actually got. It's an old mad magazine. Um, it's not in the fairest of condition, to be honest. It, it's not that great. Um, but I've gone ahead like I do with all my comic books, and I've just found some cardboard lying around here in the office. And I've just gone ahead and cut out the dimensions of the comic book like that. As you can see, it's a perfect fit. And I've, I've cut out two coffees here. And this will slide in perfectly. The comic books seem to be okay. Uh, sliding perfectly to a small satchel, just like that. So let me go ahead now and just slide her in. And uh, no bubble wrap around, uh, sorry, no um, sticky tape required around the outsides because it will be a pretty tight fit as it is. Uh, but hopefully this just slides in, which I think it will. It's always a very, very tight fit with the comic books, but that's kind of what you want. Here we go, look at this. Perfect. So that just goes in like that. Perfect tight fit there, and you can see how firm and protected that is. So that shouldn't get damaged, it shouldn't bend uh, when it's in the post, as opposed to just putting it in the satchel as is. So I'm confident that this uh, comic book should arrive in Great Nick, and I should get a really good review for it. Uh, because I've just gone ahead and I've just cut out two little pieces of cardboard, yet it's made all of the difference for this order.
All right, so there we go, guys. That is four small satchels that I've been able to fulfill. The next thing that I need to start to look at is a little more of a timely process. It is the boxes. So the next one that we're gonna be doing is this Dragon Ball Z deck of cards. I'm just gonna go ahead and put it into a small box. There's no additional cost putting them into a box. I could wrap this up and put it into a satchel, um, but I'm just gonna go ahead and put it into a box because I just don't wanna crush this box. Um, that's my only reasoning. It's not gonna cost me any more money. But to, uh, to put it in there, I'm just gonna go ahead and put some light bubble wrap around it, and then that will just slide in like that. A um, bit of bubble wrap as well should fill that out. You really wanna be just making sure there's no air holes. So that big gap there uh, is no good. If I was to just put it in like that, um, that would just bounce around in the post. So you wanna make sure it's nice and secure without overdoing it because it is all weight dependent. But something like this, um, putting bubble wrap around that, putting it in there, taping it up, um, that won't be a concern and that should cost me $7.70. Uh, to ship off to somebody locally here in Australia. I did want to say about all of these boxes that I use, I go to Bunnings quite a bit and I pick up boxes for free through their recycling program. Um, you just want to be making sure that you're aware of, I guess, you're taking note of what's on the box because certain boxes actually can't be shipped with Australia Post. This one here is a perfect example. It's got flammable gas number two. It's got the fire icon there as well. This symbol here is actually also something that doesn't get sent. Um, so it's something to pay attention to if you're finding your boxes for free. You just want to be paying attention to what's on them because this box right here um, wouldn't be able to be used for shipping. Uh, I would need to, if I wanted to use this box, find a way to maybe put some paper uh, with some sticky tape over the top just to cover it, just to show that it isn't actually what it's saying that the box is. So that's just something to really quickly pay attention to. Uh, when you're sourcing your boxes, but this one here for this little Dragon Ball Z packet, uh, the labeling that's on this, it doesn't look great. It's not a really nice thing to be sending to somebody, but at the end of the day, I just still go ahead and do it anyway because I've never had any complaints of people saying it, it doesn't look nice. Uh, it's not aesthetic upon arrival. It doesn't need to be. It just needs to be protected, which doing it this way is what it's gonna be. All right, now the next one of these PlayStation 1 games, and I'm selling quite a lot of them at the moment, and there's a very strict process with these games. They're just such a flimsy case. They can crack so easily. And this Die Hard game, for instance, is in just such great nick. It, it really is a good case that I, I want to make sure that the buyer gets it in its correct condition. So I found this box here, which I'm going to be able to use pretty well. I've decided I'm just going to actually put it on an angle. Um, so it's going to sit on an angle just like that. And I'm actually going to use butcher's paper to fill in the bottom and fill in the top. And I'm going to put a round of bubble wrap as well around it. So butcher's paper, bubble wrap, and a box. This thing, this thing should get there fine. Now, I've got, I'm, I'm in, I like the way that it is, but I'm not enjoying the fact that with this box that I've got here, there's a bit of a, see a bit of height there? Now, you're paying for the dimensions of these boxes. It might not affect it, but I'd, rather than putting another bit of bubble uh, butcher's paper in there to fill it out, I'm actually just going to cut the ends of the box um, down to size, just to make the overall size of the box a little bit smaller, a little bit more compact. So, I'm actually, if I could just move this... If I can just cut this down, even just a centimetre or two, these will just fold over nicely. That should just make it a little bit, a little bit better. So if I just if I just put my hand in there like that, I can actually fold it like that. And that there is just, I think it's just gonna go better. So I'm just gonna do that to this side here. And then I'm just gonna fold these sides down like that. There we go. So I think that is much better than being a taller box like it was before. So a bit of sticky tape around that, and then we'll be able to go ahead and measure them up. And there we go, ready to go. This is what we're gonna be doing now. It's a DVD set, but it's the dimensions of almost a small board game, which is something I always sell is, is board games. I generally sell brand new and sealed board games. Uh, and I'm going to show you the way that I'm going to uh, uh, send this off. It's actually using butcher's paper and bubble wrap without using a box or a satchel to fulfill the order.
All right, so there we go. That's typically how I do my board games. Um, nice and easy. Uh, just the, the butcher's paper is only used there, obviously, to protect it and hide it um, so people don't know what it is. And then the bubble wrap itself just does the protection. So I can go ahead now and weigh that, which by adding in the bubble wrap of the butcher's paper, it also just doesn't add too much weight either, which is ultimately, when you're doing stuff like this, is what you're going to be paying for, depending on how heavy the item is. Depends on how much you have to pay. So butcher's paper and bubble wrap, it's a nice, easy one to keep the cost down. Um, I also get myself, well, I've got one of these little table scales. So we'll go ahead and we'll uh, scale them up and uh, work it all out on Australia Post My Business in just a second. But what I'm gonna do now that I've got three boxes here to do, I'm gonna show you through the Australia Post My Business how I fulfill the order to print the label out. So I'm back into the Australia Post My Business now here. We're looking at the Die Hard Trilogy, this box right here. So. I'm gonna go now, I've just gone ahead and said no dangerous goods. Uh, the description is Die Hard Trilogy. Uh, the packaging is gonna be, instead of going with the small satchel, medium satchel, I'm gonna select my own packaging. And then I need the first step that I need to do with this is I actually need to weigh this box. So I've got this little set of scales here, a really good one that tears up to about five kilos. And that's all you need, a five kilo little uh, kitchen scale. It doesn't cost too much, you can get them from Coles and Woolies. Uh, and I'll go ahead and I'll put this on and I'll tear that first. I put that on there and it says that it's 361 grams. So I just type in 0 0.361 and then the length, width and height is what you need to work out as well. So it's just a quick measurement with a measuring tape. We've got 20 centimeters by a width of 14 by a height of 11 centimeters. So I'll just plug those in. And then what that does is it chooses the parcel. And the parcel that we've got here to be able to work with is the equivalent of the same price as a small satchel, $7.76. So even though this is now fully protected with bubble wrap, butcher's paper, and it's in a cardboard box, it's the same price as me just stuffing it into a satchel. But because I really wanna protect that game, I've just gone ahead and done this and it's worked out to be the exact same cost. So I think a lot of people, I think the perception is, my God, that's gonna cost a lot of money, but it actually doesn't. Now this one here, guys, uh, which was the Dance Mum DVD that we've fulfilled as, uh, as a board game style, um, this one's actually going internationally. So I didn't actually realize that at the time. I don't think that this is a concern even though it's going internationally. I still think that's gonna be safe and it will get there in good condition. Um, if you guys have got international setup, the, the, the beauty of Australia Post My Business with this integration is it's done and fulfilled the same as a domestic post. It's all set up for you. All you need to do is uh, go ahead and, like this one's off to the UK. All you need to do, I'm just going through it now actually really quickly. Yeah, there's nothing extra. So the no dangerous goods, it does say, do the contents have commercial value? I always say no. And then it says reason for export. I always say gift. It just means that they don't have to pay any, uh, I think, sales tax or something. Um, so I'm always selecting gift there. And that's really the only extra step. From there, there is an item value that you need to sort of fulfill. So for that dance mums, it went for about 20 bucks. So I'll put that in there. Uh, and then the item weight, I'll just go ahead and put it back onto the scales. It's 0 0.486. Uh, and then it's the origin. So it's coming from Australia. And then I'll put in the tariff code. So for that, it's gonna be just Dance Mum DVD. Let's see if it does that. Or maybe if I just type in DVD, I'll see if it auto generates. So do that, here we go. So DVD, music, DVD, video, CD, DVD, duplicator. I'm just gonna, oh, television show. There we go, television show, DVD, video, perfect. And then that HS tariff is already fulfilled. So that's really good. Uh, now down here, it, it, it's no different. So what was it? 0 0.486. And then the length and the width and the height is to be measured out. And then it will auto generate an international postage rate that it will go for. Now I always do a, a standard bulk rate of uh, based on weight, 20, 25 or $30. Um, so let's see for this, I would have said shipping would have been $25 without me knowing. So let's have a look to the UK, which is a really long way away, how, how much it'll cost. There it is there, $23.25, and I charge 25 bucks. So I've saved, as you can see here, three, if it breaks it down for you, that would have actually cost $31 in postage to the UK, but because I'm on the Australia Post Band 5, I've saved $7.75 with a Zone 4 UK and Ireland rate. So that's a massive savings. Like $31 and I'm only paying $23.25, you know, that's one sale. I do 10% of my orders go internationally. If I'm saving 
seventy dollars for ten orders. It's a big, big saving. If you can get yourself up to a band five, guys, you're going to be doing yourself some real favors. So I'm going to go ahead and save that order, but I just thought I'd really quickly show you that as well. Uh, setting off something like this internationally through the Australia Post My Business. Uh, that's how that one is done. So I'm going to print these off now and um, yeah, we should be pretty much all good to go. I think ultimately though, it's just not as scary as you think. Like it, like it really isn't. People think it's one of the toughest things. It is a time consuming thing, but the actual logistics of doing it, once you get the hang of it, once you really integrate your eBay store with the Australia Post My Business Plan, you start to save some really good money and it does automate a whole lot easier for you. I mean, when I first started out on eBay, I didn't know about this. So if you're watching this and you're only just starting out, it's gonna be a huge advantage for you to get off on the right foot and start doing it in the most efficient way possible. There's no quicker, easier, better way to do it than that integration. So hopefully you can set that one up today, get yourself going and then start getting those sales through. But... Hello. Hello there. How are you going? Really well, you? Yeah, good. Thank you. Thanks, Eve. Now guys, it is October 31, which means the hairy caterpillar above my top lip is not too far away from showing up. Movember, a really good cause, guys. Suicide prevention in young men, uh, mental health and uh, prostate cancer, testicular cancer. No better cause to get behind. I'm going to try and raise $5,000 for the month of November, uh, I'm gonna try and run five kilometers every single day for the 30 days of November and try and, and try and hit this five grand. So uh, if you wanna be involved, if you wanna donate, if you can donate, uh, the link is in the description below. And uh, if you can't through cash uh, donation, it, just hitting that subscribe button, I'm gonna donate a dollar for every single subscriber uh, for the month of November. So I'm confident we can get there, guys. Uh, a really great cause. It's something I'm very excited to be getting into over the next month. So run it up, hit that subscribe button. Let's get this thing going. All right, so I managed to find some boxes. I've got some more envelopes. So I'm gonna fulfill these five remaining orders to finalize this Monday morning post. It doesn't mean anything though, if you can't find an item that actually goes on to sell. And this video right here takes you through a thrift trip that finds really good items that actually goes on to sell on eBay. So you can get stuck into the shipping and handling that you've just learned here. Remember to subscribe, remember to like, check out the Movember link below. We'll see you soon.